they're, they're always going to be, to me, sort of memories of living here um, that I'll take with me, and I don't think I'm going to actually do the same series. I mean, obviously, I think the series will end when, it's, when I'm sort of done working here, in a way, um, because I think it's sometimes hard when you move from one place to another to sort of keep taking the same type, keep creating the same type of work, because you're going to be influenced from all different things um, wherever you end up going. Um, when I was living in France, obviously, um, my work there was had a different style to it, a, a different sort of feeling. Um, and here, it's it's kind of funny that the pieces, in a way, have a bit of like a spiritualness to them that I am slowly realizing that. Um, I mean, obviously, I I want the work um, to sort of in a way be like a reflection on your, in, you know, a reflection on the inside of you um, sort of coming out um, and that's probably why I'm using the glass and the reflection you know, and the light. For me what I find quite fascinating is even Sarah's colouring has changed and for me I personally believe it's about the fact that Sarah has come to Edinburgh and that she has been affected by that, you know, and the history and the presence of Edinburgh has seeped into her work, you know, and it's, you know, there is a sort of quite a almost gothic feel in ways to her work. When I started my master's program here, it was the, the first time I actually ever did screen printing. Um, I had seen lots of screen printing before, but, um, and was in, in, interested in doing it because, um, I always loved photography and I was a printmaker, but um, never had the opportunity to really um, ex you know, experiment with it or try it. And then when we moved to Edinburgh and I started school, um, it ended up um, having a great screen printing program and so I decided I was going to try that and see, you know, as a new printmaking medium, what, what it would sort of lead me to. Um, I. Uh, ended up really liking it because it was such a, a painterly method. Um, the first thing that struck me about Sarah's work was, apart from the depth of, you know, of her work, I mean, I couldn't believe that it was a silkscreen print. Because normally you'll find a lot of silkscreen prints are quite flat, and her work has such depth. I mean, it's almost looking like you're looking at some sort of satin velvet that's you know been printed on, you know, because it's got this real depth and layering. And then once you look into it, it's like one of those things. The image is there, and it's right in front of you, and you can see it. But then the longer you look the more information your mind picks up and you look deeper and deeper into it and then you can see all the different textures and, the, and you can actually start to almost count the layers and I mean I think Sarah uses something like between 15 and 20 layers on a piece which is just you know unbelievable you know and that's where I think her work has this painterly seductive quality. With printmaking, I think people don't understand sort of the, um, they, they have a feeling that um, because it's, it's not a painting or a drawing that um, you, you're sort of having a machine make the work for you, which I always think is quite funny because the machines that I deal with are quite dumb. <laughs> you have to tell them everything, you know, to do in order to make this image. It's funny, even though you have so much process in this medium. There's still a little bit of an element of surprise to it. I suppose, you know, I never considered myself to be a painter, but um, I always love color and, and sort of 
the bits of layering that are involved with printmaking. Um, and this became such a, a great um, sort of method to sort of tie all those things together. And so I started screen printing and I found that um, I, I liked the immediacy of it, but what I didn't like was the flat graphic um, elements that are generally associated with screen printing. So um, in order to sort of push that, um, uh, sort of alleviate that problem was to obviously come up with um, a method of uh, a layering process with color um, that would end up producing prints or images that were quite rich, that in many ways resembled paintings. So um, I started uh, that process and found that it came quite natural to me. It was, um, you know, I could suddenly see um, when something needed to be pushed back or when something was a bit dull and needed to have a bit more um, sort of richness to it. And um, I guess that element of um, the screen printing process um, became, for me, um, the sort of most exciting part about it, um, trying to see a black and white image um, turn into a sort of a very rich, um, alive piece um, that had a bit of drama to it. I guess a lot of work that I'm drawn to um, has a, a nice combination of, of drama in terms of the image striking you initially, but then underneath it um, a, a bit of subtlety that sort of entices you to stay with the image longer rather than to just sort of um, abandon it after your sort of initial response to it. So screen printing, I suppose, has um, been the medium that I found um, to work for my imagery, especially with this series that I'm doing right now, um, which I tend to call the uh, the Shimmer series. Shimmer was the, the first piece that I did um, of the series, and uh, I think because it was when I started using um, more metallic inks um, and their transparency um, enabled me to create a very subtle layer method um, so that the colors tended to sort of build and form together um, to create the sort of um, darks and lights um, that you would get from mixing the color and painting it directly on. But in this way, it was a weaving pattern that had to happen because they're individual layers of color that then have to come together. Um, you, I would have to, what I do have to do is, is sort of calculate in my mind what layer, what color is going to have to come next in order for that to work together. Um, and sometimes, obviously, when you're working on the print, it can't be pre-calculated too much. Um, you might have a sort of um, framework in which to work in, but then each image um, will dictate itself what I have to change and do to it in order for it to make it work as a final image. Um, and so when you look at I suppose this, this series, there is a general um, sort of uh, color scheme that goes with them, this sort of rich um, sort of darkness that harnesses this glowing light. But um, when you look at them more individually, there is subtle differences in terms of something a bit more red or something have a bit more um, greeny gold effect to it. And it all depends on the image that um, I'm working with at that moment. Um, once I have my images um, in the computer, um, the computer does become one of the main tools I use to develop my images. Um, these are just some examples of different um, photos I've been taken of uh, light reflections. Once I sort of have the image, um, there's a, a, some sort of part of it that um, strikes me and I'll use the computer to start manipulating the image in a black and white format which will turn out to be the laser printout that will then be taken uh, to be um, enlarged onto a transparency. And I try not to, to give too much control to the computer because I do want to make sure that I'm the one who's creating the, the image. 
and I end up making transparencies um, from laser printouts. You can just see they have a dot pattern in them and um, these will sort of rest a certain way onto the, the mesh with the screen. Um, and then this one has a slightly different angle of dot pattern so that when you overlay it um, in the printing process you end up sort of having the undercolors coming through. I'm influenced by a lot of different things and I think sometimes you can s directly see them in my work and then other times they're probably a very subconscious thing that I'm um, feeling when I'm making the work. Um, the, uh, my earlier work was of um, sort of images, uh, scientific images that I had worked with. I think Sarah's work is almost captures like the, the physicalness of light because she's basically taking photographs of light as it passes through a medium and reflecting on, uh, onto, uh, through glass and onto a, onto a wall. And there's a similarity, and I think when it comes out looking like some kind of uh, image from, from a microscope or a micrograph or whatever, you, it's because basically we're getting the same, the same approach where you know, we're shining light from a laser onto, onto some cells and uh, the fluorescent material inside the cells is reflecting light back at the, at the camera and we're collecting that. And you're getting all these textures and patterns that, you know, they're very, I think, inherently beautiful and very similar to what Sarah has. And that's maybe due to the physical nature of light as being this, you know, this particle and a wave and, and uh, just sort of the physics behind it. And, I mean, whether you're looking at chromatin and, you know, which is the DNA in the cell, you still get these, these wave-like patterns and these different intensities, which is all sort of mirrored in what Sarah does, I think. It's funny how I started this series um, because I was, we were in the flat, uh, myself and a few of my friends, and I was sitting on the opposite couch there. And it was late in the afternoon, probably about five-ish, and I think it was in May. Um, so the sun was coming in sort of from these windows, and they were projecting patterns on the wall behind me. And, uh, and I was sitting, like I said, over on that seat, and my friends were sitting here. And, and my friend at one point, looked at me and she said, oh my God, Sarah, you have to turn around. You're not going to believe what's on your wall. She said, it looks exactly like the work you're doing right now. And, um, and I said, what? And, and I turned around and this entire wall was lit up and there were these patterns that were quite cellular looking. And it was, and, but they were all different. Each window had a different pattern in it. And it was unbelievable. And I turned around and I, I literally gasped because I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe, this is unbelievable. And I think it was, the, it was the first year we were living here. So, I mean, it was the first time I experienced the light coming in at this time of day and witnessed, you know, them on there. And that entire summer, I photographed this place in every possible room at every possible time of the day. And I think at that point, I realized that you know, a new new direction of my work was going to was going to happen because I had so much visual material to work with, um, and they were just I mean it was like water on my walls. They were absolutely beautiful. Um, just the fluidity of them was you know I mean, it would just melt you. It was just amazing. Uh, and I ended up ended up like as I said taking loads and loads of photos and um, I think the majority of my sort of ha half of the work. Um, that uh, that's in the show is is based on those early images, those early photographs that I took. As by living in Edinburgh has influenced this this use um, of color, this sort of dramatic light next to this sort of very intense darkness. Um, and so I think, obviously, that that has definitely influenced the series. I don't think if I if I was doing this, you know, do I, I in no way could be creating this same series anywhere else. Really, it'd have to be here. Um, and I think that's. Uh, it's kind of telling.